Hello, I'm Roger Givis. Welcome back to this part four of the HMC Enhanced Plus Graphical User Interface Live demo. In this part, we're going to look at the managed servers. That's HMC speak for the power systems or power machines that we operate with the HMC. Right, so we're going to look at our servers, so we'll bring those back up. Here they all are, they're in alphabetical order, so that makes sense. I can filter on a particular one. Um, but we have lots of things that are live in here. The name is live, and we've got an I, a pie chart, operating. Well, that's obviously the, uh, running. Um, if it's we stop it, it will say uh, powered off. And we've got a little graph in here. So let's uh, drill into a couple of these things. Normally, an I, if we saw this in the high street, we say, well, that's an like, information box. And we're going to find some uh, properties in this case. And it tells us you know, the machine type, the serial number in here from a Power 6 machine, the firmware it's running. Hopefully, that's just about the latest and it's actually in a group and this one hasn't got an LED on if I select one that has uh, this one in here um, it says that the LED is on if I click the button here I could turn off the LED this is the warning orange warning light on the front of the machine and of course if I click um, OK there it's going to switch off the uh, attention LED and it will automatically fix all the problems on the box for me. Isn't that, isn't that marvellous? Uh, I'm actually talking rubbish, of course. It's just switched off the light on the front of the box. There's a whole bunch of uh, issues in here. I can look at the serviceable events to go and find those uh, later on. Okay, uh, little things that you want to do in here. If you want to have a look at this one, but that, oh, we want to look at this one as well. And if I click on here, no, that doesn't work. So I can't get here. I can't actually get underneath this box. Um, so we actually got this thing, a little grey area at the top, it's got a grab tab. So we can actually click on that and drag it over here. And then I can click on this one and drag it, drag it over here. And uh, these are all fairly identical machines and so I could grab them all and put them uh, all together in here. And you can see they're actually bought very uh, similar times. This is a, an A21, this is A51 and A11. And these two will be the missing 31. I forget where they are now, let's go and find them. Uh, there's the 41 and we're missing the 31. Okay, so they are a set and we can see them and compare and contrast. We can use a little X in here to actually get rid of the and once we're, we're done with them. Okay, so that's useful just for looking at, you know, yeah, what is it? What's the serial number? Okay, that, that is the one that I have an error reported against and I need to go and fix it. We have a little pie chart in here and this helps explain what these little graphs are in here. Let, let's do um, down here Emerald because it's got something going on in here. If we click on Capacity, we get a pop-up and these three little graphs are in the same order. You can see they look the same and they actually have the same numbers. So it's processor, memory, network and storage is what's going on in here. And we've got some much more information in here. So we actually got 16 installed. In this case, they're all activated. This is a scale out model. Yes, so it is. So that's uh, obvious. Um, the average is 8.61 in here. It peaked a little bit higher than that. And there's actually four CPUs that haven't been allocated to uh, LPARs yet, so that's good. Uh, the data collection means we're actually collecting stats on, from the HMC, and we can look at the performance dashboard later on. That's the last thing we're going to do in this uh, video. Okay, and again, we've got uh, grab tabs in here, so I can pull this one away and uh, look at... Uh, compare and contrast that to uh, my Ruby machine which has more CPUs available and what it's already allocated it's hardly using at all. So we might decide well we could move some of these LPARS CPUs, the busy ones, to, to Ruby to actually improve the performance across our logical partitions. Right now let's um, Let's actually use this little button here. This is how we can select machines. We can select multiple machines. Uh, then when we selected any or one or more, we get the action buttons comes up. And this will say what these are the actions we can perform against both of these machines at the same time, which is at many. So let's go and click one off. If you had four or five pages of machines in here um, and you, you can't see the one that's clicked, well, you can in this case, um, just a little dodge, if you select all and then select all again, it switches them all off. So you can definitely know all the ones you can't see below your screen um, are all switched off again. 
Okay, so let's click on here and do action. So these are the common actions. The, the guys have watched what people do and decided these are the actions they're actually going to, to do most common properties. We can see how to drill down to that in a second. Um, Oh, sorry, it's part, list of the partitions, list of the properties, there's a the performance dashboard again, look at that later, and we're actually saying do you want to actually uh, collect the data or not in here, LEDs, update them or not. Now if you can't find what you want on this list, you can go down here, you tend to have to click it to bring it back up, there we go, and there's the, for example, the power off. Now what's in here will change depending on the state of the machine, if the machine is powered off, then this will say power on up in here. Um, so these are a dynamic uh, lists. Right, now come, come out of that. We can also, if we just want to go in, and the default, in fact, was up in here, system properties, if we want to go to there, we can just click on the name of the thing. We don't have to click on the little check button. So these are the partitions running on my Emerald server. You can actually see this thing building up in there. It's got resources, which is in here. Uh, all systems, I've selected one particular one, are in the partitions view. This name is the, is the name that we can see in here. And if I want to change to a different view, I've got lots of other views down in here of this particular resource. Um, I can click on here and move down to them. We've got general and processor, and you can see that down here is general and processor and virtual I.O. servers and all the others in down in here. So sometimes you might prefer to, to click on here to get that list, and sometimes I prefer actually using these ones down in here. These ones you can actually um, sort of hide as well. If you click the ones that have got up arrows on them, then you can actually hide a lot of information in here and have the one open that you actually want. Uh, now, in this case, this is a particular machine. We think, oh, no, I didn't mean emerald. Particularly if you've got lots of machines with very similar numbers. You had the one that ended with a B, but you wanted the one that ended with a D. You click on the list of resources and you can go and look at the other machine. So it keeps you in the same view, and it takes you to the other machine. Yeah, down in here, we can also look at the uh, partitions and VO servers. That's the same list as we got in here, partitions, VO servers, frames, etc. Okay, so let's go back to uh, Emerald. That's got some uh, things running it that I want to show you uh, in a minute. Another thing you can do with the breadcrumbs is just get out of where you are. You could go down lots of levels down in here, and we could say, let's just go back up to the top. I want to see all my systems again, and select a different one. Right, back into Emerald, we're going to look down at this list in here of things we actually want to see. Here's all the partitions on the machine. <clears throat> you might have gone into partitions and found the partition another way by looking amongst all the partitions available on your HMC. Um, or you can go into here. Um, so this is the partitions we're actually doing. You see these little pop-ups in here says there's 10 of them available. Two VIO servers available. Also general settings for this machine now. Remember we're looking at servers or systems in this case. So here's the, the name of it. We can change the name of it. We can say it's IP in South Bank. We could put the fact that it's actually in Suite 2 which is the uh, computer room in here. Now, when we did that, you saw it flashed up. It was thinking a little bit. It said, okay, you've changed that. You've got a save operation in here. This uh, change uh, won't be saved until we actually hit the save button. So if you go somewhere else, it will uh, throw that away. Um, or you can do a cancel if that's what you really want to do. If you actually try to move away from this screen, it says, no, no you've got to tell me, do you want this data or not in here, this changes that you've made. In this case, we'll do a save, and we've got the extra thing in the description in here. I've had all my computers in the same uh, place. Uh, so this is the location. This is the actual description down in here. So you might put lots of useful information about the machine Um Who's the owner? Who to phone uh, if there's a problem with this? Uh, who to escalate to if um, it's four o'clock in the morning and it, somebody's got to give permission to power it off because it's caught fire or something? Whatever you want, you can put in there. Down in here, we got uh, processor and memory. So it's just got the descriptions of what we got in here. We saw these uh, little uh, bit of detail on those uh, pop-up uh, statistics in here. Um, you can see we've got uh, active memory sharing is supported in here and the physical adapters um, if I scroll down in here we've got a, a big table full of all the adapters of fiber channels in here and it's owned by a particular VO server I've got a 4 port 10 gigabit ethernet in here 
um, and it's not in use at the moment so maybe I can put that into an LPAR this is telling me there's a whole bunch of uh, ports on here in different types so we can switch those off if you want look at the other adapters inside the box an empty slot so we've got three empty slots in here we could put an extra couple of adapters in here if somebody uh, desperately wants that and we've got SAS RAID for example for our VO servers to boot off inside the machine Further on down in here, we got the virtual I/O servers, and uh, we got a sort of naming convention: the VO server one, a VO server two. Bit of a giveaway about what that's about. Virtual networks in here takes a little bit of time coming up. We've got a very simple configuration. We don't have a lot of IP addresses. Uh, I'm the network administrator for two um, two hundred fifty-six port uh, address ranges. Uh, we've got the virtual switch in here, virtual networking bridge, and all those sorts of things in here too. Uh, just as a list, uh, we could do things in here. We could like add a virtual network, and it'll ask us for the the details of what we want. And off we go. Give me a little flash up in here that has finished something we're doing. I'll just cancel out of that, as as you would expect. Virtual NICs. Uh, I don't think our SRIOV adapters uh, are in use at the moment. Virtual storage. It's having to go to the VO servers and ask uh, what's going on in here. Then virtual storage, we've got the two uh, virtual I.O. servers providing that. And we have a shared storage pool in here. And so the f shared storage pool that this machine is actually connected to is called uh, Orbit. Four and a half uh, terabytes, two and a half terabytes uh, free. So that's all fine. We've got virtualized hardware in here. Uh, here's the SREIV adapters. We're not actually using these at the moment. I can tell you what's uh, what's up and down in here, modify the adapter, uh, click a particular port. Then we've got actions we can do in here, view physical port, for example. Okay, um, we've got shared processor pools down in here, um, and um, I'm looking for capacity upgrade on demand functions in here. Um, this again will look similar to what you get with a classic. I'm just trying to look for the uh, serviceability. Yeah, here's a new one in here, a virtual network diagram. There's a completely new feature, I believe, in the 870. I, well, I haven't noticed it in the uh, earlier versions of the HMC Enhanced Plus. The um, Classic doesn't let you do things like this. It took a little while to come up, but it, it is new. It'll probably get faster in, in the next release. So we actually got to this little hand in here, so we can actually walk around this diagram in here and, and move it around. And I can slide it up, and so we see the two VO servers. I've got two C's and the uh, ENT numbers uh, in here, and here's the VLAN 62. And um, because we're 9.137.62, that's where we get that from. And you actually see the IP addresses of the virtual uh, uh, machines further down here, the actual partitions. Nice way of making sure that it is connected the way you thought it was connected, and you can see the actual adapters that it's going out on in slots to C2, C10. Well, that's enough about servers. There's a couple of things I haven't shown you. I'll pop these um, out of the way. You see the um, down arrows. Um, I didn't click on uh, this one, actions. Oh, capacity are those same graphs that we've seen before. CPU, memory, network, and storage. And so you, you get to, to remember those. Um, in here, we have a whole load of detailed things. One here called legacy that we, you know, we put them in here, well, the developers did, uh, just in case you really need to do them. So we've got operations in here, which, which is where this power off is hiding. You can find that in the higher up level, of course. We saw that earlier. I've got uh, sort of power management and scheduled operations and uh, uh, rebuild the server if you think your HMC is out of sync with a service processor, that sort of thing. That's all in here. Here's the ASME menu. Can't say I've dived into that very often recently change system password um, so in here then we've got some uh, the connection stuff for uh, resetting the connection or disconnecting a machine because you want to move it to a different HMC uh, templates we're going to look at that uh, later but we can deploy a system template to a machine um, or we can go into templates and then select the machine we want to uh, deploy to and we can create a partition template um, uh, 
a partition from a template as well. This is a system template and partition template. We'll look at those later on. So let's dodge that. Uh, updates in here. Here we're actually going to um, update the system firmware. And once we click on these buttons, it's exactly as you would expect. Um, for the updates, it sort of clarified the names of these. The updating the current release or putting a new, whole new release of the firmware on. That's from going from like uh, 7.30 to 7.40. We've got uh, legacy in here, a few bits and pieces that uh, uh, we, we just needed to put somewhere. Uh, the partition availability priority, that's actually used by the SRR, isn't it? the simplified remote restart. So that's actually something that's important. I have uh, used recently and uh, saving the partition data. I haven't done that for a long time. Well, that's it for part four. Part five coming up next is the virtual machines.